Welcome to another episode of Remote Teaching Diaries hosted by Quizlet. Today, I'm so happy to share with you a lovely panel of teachers all going through crazy remote learning situations right now, whether it's remote, hybrid, face-to-face, -face, all that good stuff, and basically going through all of the craziness of what remote teaching brings. So I'm really excited to have my panel here today with me to discuss all things remote learning. So first of all, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Rory Yakubov. I am a ninth grade math teacher. I teach algebra and geometry at Oldbridge High School in Oldbridge, New Jersey. I've been teaching for 15 years and this is definitely the craziest year of them all. My name is Christy Powell. I am a high school Spanish teacher. I teach 10th grade Spanish, uh, Spanish two and Spanish three and I teach in Sandy Hook, Connecticut, and I've been teaching for five years. Hi, my name is Ashley Waldman, and I'm a ninth grade history teacher, specifically world history and AP world history. I'm also a teacher at Old Bridge High School. I'm actually Rory's neighbor right next door, and I've been teaching for about 10 years. Hi, I'm Stephanie Yee, and I am a middle school math teacher. I'm in my seventh year of teaching middle school math, and I currently teach in California. Awesome. Okay, guys. So first, I want to just go through with everyone. Are you remote, hybrid, or face-to-face? -face? What are you doing, Christy? Currently, my school is on the hybrid schedule. So we see each student one time a week in person, and then they have three virtual days. So for Oldbridge, uh, for Oldbridge, we are today was actually our last day of all virtual. So Monday after the after the uh, four day NJEA convention weekend, we go back Monday in our hybrid model where students are in school one day a week with three cohorts and there's two virtual days. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, students are in the building and then Tuesday, Thursday, everyone's at home. And so we'll see how it goes. Um, we already had two days where we had to set up our classroom and also teach from school to make sure that the Wi-Fi was working. And I had no problems myself, so that's great. Uh, Christy, sending you some extra good vibes. Hopefully that goes okay. Um, I'm currently all virtual right now, and we're planning to go virtual until the end of January. And I feel like I just feel so lucky that that's our situation. I can't imagine going back right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, Stephanie, I feel the same way. I'm with Ashley and we've been virtual this whole time. Um, it wasn't a call until early August. Uh, we found out randomly one day that, oh, you know what? We were gonna start hybrid and then they decided to start us virtual. And I just felt like this huge weight was lifted off my chest. I felt I could actually sleep that night. I spent all of July and the beginning of August just so unsure about what am I gonna do? How am I gonna manage this? I'm starting to watch teachers from other states like Georgia who already went back early August. And I'm just like, okay, well, I guess we'll wait and see what they're doing before we go back. And then when we found out we were completely virtual, I was just like, okay, I can do this. Like I can manage this. Um, got a little taste of it in the spring and I just felt like I could know, I know how to make this better. And now that Ashley and I are going back um, hybrid and you probably will be watching this video past the time that we've already gone in, um, we're going in November 9th. I'm nervous. I, um, I know I have everything ready to go as far as like, organizational, you know, issues. Like I'm organized, I have all my stuff ready to go. That's not a problem. My room is all set up. That's not a problem. The spacing should be fine. I just have this sick to my stomach feeling about going in and, you know, possible exposure or managing a student who maybe got exposed and then the stress of you know, everything snowballs. And you hear about all these stories about, you know, a teacher getting sick or a student getting sick and then the administration having to reach out to everyone that's been somewhere near that student or teacher. And I'm just, I fear that I'm gonna end up being in one of those cases, situations, hopefully I don't get sick myself, but just knowing that that's now 
more of a possibility. The probability is much higher going into hybrid than just being in my, you know, office at home, just teaching virtually definitely makes me, um, I'm going to overeat a lot this weekend, just stress eating. Um, but I can say something from the spring to the fall. When we did hybrid learning, when we did remote learning, excuse me, in the spring, and we just kind of got thrust into it, uh, one of the saving graces was that our school district was already submerged into Microsoft Teams. A good amount of teachers were already using it with their students, not everyone, but the students kind of eased into virtual learning okay. Um, we were also kind of lucky that we didn't, we could still teach new content. I saw a lot in the spring about schools, they were only allowed to teach, um, they were only allowed to review previous content. They actually couldn't teach new content because of getting devices to students. We didn't really have that issue, but in the fall, the transition in teaching virtually has been pretty smooth. I mean, kids don't talk to me, so I get upset with that. But my instruction, my delivery of instruction, all the materials I can give my students, I feel great about. Um, so like the difference between, you know, spring and fall with remote has really just been, I'm definitely more organized. I'm definitely all together. I just wish my students, you know, showed me their faces and unmuted and laughed at my stupid jokes that I'm trying to make, you know, because I try to be a clown in class and it's not really working through my laptop. What about you, Christy? Yeah, it's definitely been like very interesting because we have been hybrid since day one. Um, and it was a big transition for us coming from the spring to the fall because obviously in the spring we were fully remote. And um, we also used to have 54 minute classes and when we moved schedule, we transitioned to a block, which is why we only see the kids one time in person because the second day they're in person, they see their other four classes um, and then they have three days that are virtual. So transitioning from 54 to 85 minutes was really overwhelming for me because um, I've never had that long class to plan for. So that was really a challenge. And then um, I will tell you the first week is definitely the hardest with hybrid just because it's so hard to maintain the people who are in front of you with the people who are on and remember to engage both. But I promise it gets easier really quickly. Um, and now it feels really routine. We were actually supposed to go full in this past Monday, but because of rising COVID cases, we told us last week that we're going to stay in the hybrid until Thanksgiving. So it's actually kind of nice, a little bit of a relief because we're staying with what we know right now. The kids have definitely completely adjusted to the hybrid schedule. And so hopefully we'll be able to get those numbers down and eventually have the kids in the classroom. Um, but it is so nice um, to have the kids there and to have that interaction with them. You really don't know how much you miss it until it's done. And so having those kids in the classroom, I promise, will make all of those fears and those nerves that you have go away really quickly because it's just, it's really nice to have them there. That's good to hear, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, my biggest challenge, so I was the same as Rory where we were basically thrown into remote or virtual in the springtime. And however, uh, you already had a rapport with the students and they already knew like what to expect on Teams. So that was really easy. I found that I wish I would have done like more live instruction with them in the springtime because I did miss talking to them and never got to say goodbye for the year. But now that we have, we can do, we do that in the fall now. So we do have live instruction, but I have the same issues also um, in that not a lot of students turn on their cameras. I do have one class where a lot of students do. And so that's, that's really encouraging, but then there will be other classes where I'll say something and I'm just like, is anybody there? <laughs> Can anyone hear me? Uh, and I always make jokes where I'm like, oh, if we were in the classroom, I would see you nodding or smiling or something. So that's been a little difficult, um, but each class has been kind of different. Um, I found my smallest class is probably my quietest, which would probably be the case in person. But again, it is different talking to a computer screen. So hopefully yeah, I'm looking forward to at least seeing people. I am worried too about going back a little bit, like same with Rory, like getting possibly exposure because then it's not just, you know, me, it's my husband. And then, you know, we have to quarantine. There's like all these things that come with it. Um, I'm also worried about talking in a mask all day because I'm not really a loud speaker to begin with. And so I don't know how I'm gonna, you know, make sure everyone hears me. I'm also, and then the computer too. So I am a little nervous 
about that and like losing my voice or something. So, but it has been a little bit easier. I feel more organized at least. Um, but then there's other things like an AP, there's so much content. And in the springtime we were wrapping up because the AP exam changed and they cut off half the material anyway uh, by College Board. But now it's a whole brand new course and I just feel like I'm throwing so much at them. And then I worry that I'm like, you know, freaking them out or overwhelming them. Whereas at least in springtime with AP, it was pretty much over anyway, it was just review. Um, so yeah, I'm worried about that too. Yeah, um, Ashley, what you were saying about like not being able to say bye to your kids, um, that is really hard. I feel like that was a really tough part of um, the spring last year. Um, I actually, before COVID started, I had planned to, last year, I had planned to like cut my year short and then go traveling with my husband for two months. Um, obviously that didn't happen, but um, my last day ended up being our last day as a whole school in person. Um, and so it worked out kind of well for me and it was really hard. Like I had to hold a circle with my students and tell them like, hey, I'm actually not gonna be back um, and you're gonna have another teacher. Um, and this was something we had planned as a school throughout the year, but it was still like so tough to like tell the kids like that I wasn't gonna be back and then they were all going on quarantine. And so when they come back, they were going to have a new instructor. Um, and like, I think looking back, I was like, wow, that day was really hard. Um, but I also just feel so lucky that I was able to say bye to my students. And just like, it breaks my heart to like, even now when I'm like talking about it, I just feel so sad for all of my students who like weren't able to like say bye to their teachers and their teachers who like had to say bye to their students virtually. And I think that is something that like I think about a lot. Um, but now as we're moving into virtual again, um, I think like a lot of what I'm thinking about is like, how can I build those relationships with my students? Cause I've never seen them. Like some of them, as you said, Ashley, like they don't turn on their camera. So I have like, when I take attendance, they have like their yearbook pictures in there. So I know what they look like a year ago. Um, but then, <laughs> but then I don't know what they look like besides that. Like some of my kids, they might turn on their cameras in class. I'm like, wow, you look really different now. Like you like cut your hair since a year ago. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's really different. To, Seeing, teaching virtually and like seeing all those black screens most days. Um, I think like we're still working to build relationships and I think um, that still has been happening, which I feel really grateful for. Yeah. What do you, um, are you guys doing anything? Well, I mean, everything is pretty much different from how we would have taught, you know, last year before um, COVID and all that stuff. So. I mean, there's a lot that's definitely changed, but I feel um, like a couple things that I've done differently that have been pretty good that I would want to continue through. Like last year, even before Corona, but last year was my first year, I started, um, you know, giving homework assignments, but giving more time to con uh, complete a homework assignment, let's say like a few days. I kind of switched my mindset to all right, you know, if we do three lessons this week, all three homework assignments are due at the end of the week. And so they could kind of piece it out however they needed to. And now with remote learning, that's actually just been something beautifully that I've been able to continue. Um, you know, if I do a lesson that day, I know I'm not making the assignment due that day. And I just found myself, I need, I need to make sure I'm a little bit flexible um, with things. There's certain things I'm super rigid on and then there's certain things that because of remote teaching, you know, I, I know I need to be a little bit flexible. I have to know if, you know, a student has Wi-Fi issues. Like we've had a lot of students in our town that um, are having Wi-Fi issues, connection issues. Everyone has a device and you can have a million devices, but if your connection is poor on a laptop, then you're, you're kind of out of luck. So um, having things with like a little bit of an extended due date has definitely be some, has been something that's been helpful that I probably will just continue you know, once all of this is done, I would still continue to do that. Do you have anything like that that you're kind of doing a little differently that you would <clears throat> keep keep going with, Christy? Yeah, I would say um, one thing I feel like I've mastered is getting really good at teasing kids into volunteering um, because we don't have the kids with their cameras off and we 
the students can only have their cameras off at my school if we allow them to. So the policy is the cameras are always on, which is actually pretty nice. Um, it really helped with learning the kids' names because that was such a challenge this year because learning a student's name is really hard for me in general, never mind when their mask is covering their face when they're in the building. So um, having the cameras on has been really nice, but I'm sure just like every teacher is experiencing right now, it's really hard to get those kids out of their comfort zone and to unmute themselves or to write a question in the chat or to volunteer in the chat. So um, I've gotten really good at um, tease volunteer telling people to do things. I'm like, you know what, Rory, I can just tell by your face right now, you have the answer and I'm just, I'm waiting for you to share your brilliance with us. So why don't you go ahead, turn your mic on, let us know what you got. And I've gotten really good at that. And so I think using that as a way to coax kids into volunteering is something I'm definitely going to continue to do um, because the kids have actually responded really well to it and can tell that I'm like floundering in the classroom sometimes. Um, and I think that definitely, like you said as well, being flexible has been huge. Um, we really need to be considerate of what's going on with students and extending deadlines and understanding where students are coming from during these tough times. I think it's something that has made me a better teacher and learning to be more empathetic as a professional and, you know, knowing when it's important to be strict and when it's important to flex on things um, is something that I really have learned a lot about and I definitely plan to continue doing as we move forward with remote and then hopefully regular learning. Right. I really like that, Christy, the voluntelling where you're like, oh, I can see it in your face. I definitely am going to steal that when I can also see faces again. So I really like that. It sounds really fun. It makes them maybe not as nervous to like, participate. So I really like that. I've been dabbling in the flipped classroom model where I make, uh, I used to always do more, I guess, direct instruction for certain things. Uh, so I've been assigning readings. I always did this in AP since there's so much content but I started doing it in my honors level too, assigning them readings ahead of time. And then I've also been making YouTube videos with my screencastify, PowerPoint. I don't know how entertaining it is. Um, and I don't, I just tell them, I say, you should watch this. I don't actually like keep track because you know, it's, that's just something extra also for them. But I tell them that way we can do skill practice in class. So we can, you know, practice writing or analyzing documents or talking, or I share another video. There's some history channel documentaries that are very short, like 10 minutes I send them to. So I've been trying to do that. So that way when they come in, since I only see them, depending on the week, either two or three times, since we alternate A, B days. And so I've been trying to do that. So not fully flipped, but I'm working on it. Hopefully my editing skills and my videos can get a little bit better. <laughs> There's some really rock stars out there like Rory and other people posting great videos that I just can't. I even make jokes how I'm not as good as um, certain teachers that are in the AP world, like gurus that post these like hundreds of thousands of views on videos. And I'm like, I know I'm not as good as them, but so trying a little bit. I like that you're doing the flip classroom though, Ashley. I feel like, um, like Roy was also saying, like not knowing how students' Wi-Fi is. I think it's been really tough because in the classroom of like 30, 30 I teach like maybe 37 students at a time. Um, we'll have students who like, they're like, oh, you're lagging, you're glitching out, or they'll like um, be like in and out of the Zoom class and they're trying so hard to get in. And it, it's so tough because it's like you're, you're here and you're trying to learn, but like your internet is just not having it today. Um, and so I, I feel like I've been thinking a lot about the flipped classroom, but it's not something that we're, I don't know if we're allowed to do quite yet um, because they want the live instruction in class. Um, but I think like that's something I've been thinking about a lot. So I'm glad that it's working out for you. Um, but I think it's just tough, like not knowing where students are um, in terms of like their tech. Um, mm -hmm. Something that I am doing Differently now, I've been doing a lot of like openers in class where I'll do like this or that questions or like a mood check in. And I feel like I've just tried to be more intentional about checking in with students and how they're doing more so than I do in person. Um, I feel like in person, I'm just like, okay, go, go, go. We have so little time to get through all this curriculum. Um, like there's no time for anything. And I feel like now knowing that students are at home and they're very, they feel so lonely, like, and they feel so bored and they're just looking for that connection. I've been trying to build that in more. 
Um, but it's been fun too, because I feel like I've gotten to know them a lot better. Um, so I'm trying to, hopefully I can add that into um, in person when we go back. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, so those are all like really good things. And I definitely want to steal some of those ideas for sure. Um, what about things? Have you done anything so far this year that you tried out and you were like, this went over really well in the beginning, but then you stopped, like maybe it did really wasn't working out well, or is there anything that you regret about what you've started this year or you wish you'd started a little differently? Like for me, um, our district is not mandating that the kids have their cameras on, which is why most of them always keep their cameras off. But I wish that probably from day one, and some teachers did this in my district and I just didn't, I really wish from the beginning I enforced the cameras on, like I promoted it a lot more. I suggested it to my students, but I think probably if I had attacked it a little differently um, from the beginning, I'd probably have more kids with their cameras on right from the beginning. And I gotta say, because of it, I don't know a ton of these kids' names. And I'll be honest with you, I got an email a couple days ago from a student, a name I swore I never saw before. I was like, this kid emailed me and I, I think he emailed the wrong teacher because I don't have him. And I looked in my five class list and I, I found his name and I was like, oh my God, like that's how bad it is. I've been teaching them for two months and I just, and I, then I joined in my classes and I'm saying, guys, I don't know you, you know, the marking period's ending. I don't know you. Um, and now all of a sudden you're like, Hey, what can I do to improve my grade? And I'm like, from like mean girl she doesn't even go here like that's <laughs> like, but who are you I don't know you so I, I really regret that I didn't from the beginning try harder I didn't want to like I thought that oh I'll just let the kids do what they need to do whatever they feel more comfortable with and now I regret it I regret that I wish I did things differently what about you Christine yeah I wish that I was more savvy with Google Forms than I thought that I was. Um, I thought I was like the Google Form queen because I do all my homework with Google Forms because they grade themselves and um, duh. But um, when we started giving full assessments via Google Form in, in the spring, I thought that I was like doing it correctly until um, one of my more honest students decided to let me know that Google Forms, when you open them, the first thing they do when they're in Spanish is offer to Google Translate the entire page. Um, and so all of my quizzes I had been giving out were translated completely to English with one click. And so I had no idea, and none of us did. Um, it was just really kind of hard to realize that basically we had given the kids an easy cheat, like no brainer. Um, and you know, no fault to them. Why wouldn't you when it's that easy? So um, now I realize there's a workaround where we um, import the questions as images um, because then they can't be Google translated because they're oh. images instead of text. Um, but that was something that was a really tough realization for me. And now it is a very time consuming loophole to get around. Um, so I trying to be more proactive and coming up with other assessments. It's just, it's so hard. Like, you know, you don't want to rewrite your entire curriculum for one year just because it doesn't super suit the digital format. Um, but at the same time, you want a fair experience for all your students and especially for us in the hybrid model. I assess the students who are in person on paper, and then the students who are in our cohort D, which is our completely remote cohort, we have no choice. They can choose to stay home the entire year if they so choose, and many have, and so we have no choice. We have to digitize our assessments. So it's just been very challenging to wrap our brains around that, to try and find these loopholes and you know learn from our mistakes kind of on the fly. And um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm very worried about what midterms is going to look like because um, I don't want my midterms on the internet um, but you know we're learning as we go and you know it's like I always tell my kids you know mistakes are not a bad thing it means that you're learning so I'm just trying to take a taste of my own medicine and be sure that I'm looking at this as a positive light as I am just 
learning a whole lot every day. <laughs> well, Christy, I am sure that there's a foreign language teacher who's watching this right now somewhere going, oh my God, <laughs> that is why everyone is doing so well. I need to fix that now. What about you, Ashley? Oh, wow. Yeah, that sounds like, I wouldn't even think that that would happen either, Christy. That's I already think like you can Google my questions, but just to have Google automatically like, like here you go, <laughs> that's just, <laughs> um, so I'm the same as with the cameras too, is that I wish I would have been more like, please, I did encourage you and I said, if you're at least going to ask a question, if you could turn it on while you ask your question, and then you can turn it back off again, um, because yeah, I don't know. I know some of the students really well, like the ones that participate a lot, I can almost recognize their voice, like when I have the screen minimized because I'm screen sharing. But then there are other students where I I don't know, and then I'm take, I'm looking at their assessment grade, and I'm like, or their assessments, and I'm like, oh yeah, like they didn't say anything today, and unless, except when I took attendance, and then I'm, so it's just kind of, it's kind of sad, because even like in class, like you would at least, you know, see them in class. Uh, I do like, though, that some of them that might not talk can talk in the chat, which happens sometimes, but I wish I'd also encourage that more, too. Like, oh, please, like, write in the chat, because someone will ask a question, like, what did I miss? I got kicked out of the meeting, and nobody will say anything, and then I'll see it, like, 30 minutes later, and I'm like, I don't know what we were, so I'm always saying, oh, if you want to, like, just answer this person, like, help them out, so mm -hmm. I wish I'd be more encouraging of that more encouraging of group works, uh, group work. I've tried breakout rooms on Teams, but it's still a new feature, I think, and mine doesn't work that well. Uh, my personal account, I've tried it a few times and it tells me can't make your rooms. Um, so I've done different things like channels, specific channels and meetings in those channels. But I also feel like they're not getting enough like social interaction with each other. And that's a big part of my classroom in, in face to face, like all, all of us and I just feel like I wish I'd do more of that too so yeah there's a lot there and then it's harder too to write assessments like I try to do more writing assessments but then it takes a while to grade because Google Forms or our Microsoft Forms you know only automatically grades multiple choice mm -hmm. but a lot of test bank questions from textbooks are actually on Quizlet or on other websites and Quizlet is awesome about removing them yeah I have reported I have reported some <laughs> and they're usually gone like really fast so that's awesome but it's just, it's just all over, you know, it's, it's hard. So I'm working on better assessments too. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think I, I'm also on board with the cameras. I feel like on day one, I was kind of like, oh, you know, like I want to be mindful of how students are feeling. Um, I know there's a lot of issues with, you know, like seeing into their homes and like maybe right. they're not comfortable with that. Um, and so I, I think, I was like, okay, I'm gonna just be, you do you, whatever works for you. Um, but then like, but then there's just those, some kids who are like in and they're not really doing anything and they're not engaging with the content. Um, and so like, I wish, like, it's hard to know where to draw that line. Mm -hmm. I feel like with distance learning, like, um, like holding them to those high expectations, but also like being mindful of like their needs at home or like what they might need um, outside of school. Um, I, I can't remember. I was going to say something else, but I just finished. No, that's <laughs> now, now, talking about all of this and talking about what we're doing that works well, things that we regret that we did differently, all of these things that we're like juggling, right? We care so much about our students and we want everyone to be good to go. And we're getting ourselves like all organized and good to go. And we're doing these things. We're trying to make our stuff better our you know teaching experience better for the students and we care about the students and then we sometimes then forget about ourselves right so we are so focused on how do I do my job the best how do I get my students everything how do I get my students so set up so well that I don't have to get a ton of parent emails right because that's like the ultimate goal is to not get any student emails or parent emails complaining or asking questions and then we almost just leave ourselves last like how we take care of ourselves. And uh, I mentioned before, you know, this going into this weekend before we start hybrid, I'll be stress eating. And of course, Halloween just passed. So I'm constantly going into my kids' candy things. And I've already cleared out all the Reese's Pieces, all the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, all the yellow Starburst. Yes, I love yellow Starburst. Don't come for me for that. And I'm just like cleaning things out, right? So now I'm thinking, okay, I need to really just, probably not overeat, not stress eat, but I just need to do things for myself to 
like make myself happy. So something um, during this time, like right before remote learning started, I said, you know what? My nail salon is open. I really should just go get my, I, something I enjoy, right? So something I look forward to, just simply just getting a manicure or a pedicure. Things that, like the little self-care things. So every time I look at my hand, I'm like, oh, ah, that looks nice. Like that, some basic things, you know? I always wish I was um, doing more things. Like I'd love to take a nice bubble bath or like, you know, have my little spa moment. And I haven't had that, but I've also been trying to just be like, oh, you know what? I really want that like tote bag. That to If I get that tote bag, then bringing my laptop back and forth for hybrid is going to make me feel much better about it. So I'm going to go get that tote bag because I need it because Yes, I have some other ones, but they're not going to be as good as this one. And it'll make hybrid learning much better. So I've also been playing those games with myself. And I feel like, you know, as long as I'm not spending too much money, which I'm not, I'm always buying reasonably price, priced things. I feel like that's my little form of self-care. You know, things I'm just trying to do for myself to make the situation better or easier. Um, because yeah over stress eating is my my big problem right now christy what about you you gotta treat yourself or you gotta get that tote <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you deserve it. my thirty dollar tote from target you know, it's, right here. it's beautiful though i love it i mean really i'm sure that's breaking the bank for you <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I'm definitely with you on the stress eating. Um, the amount of Taco Bell I have consumed in the last couple months is alarming. Um, but, you know, quesaritos are life. And um, definitely spending uh, time with my cats has been helpful. They're just cute and they always make my day better. Um, spending time with my fiance has been really important to me. Um, we actually had to cancel our wedding. Um, it was supposed to be last month. So taking this time to really appreciate each other and appreciate, you know, being engaged, you're only engaged once and it is really fast. So now we're just looking at it as extending one of the best periods. And, um, I think the biggest thing that's really been my saving grace for, you know, self-care has been therapy. Um, going to therapy once a week has been so restorative to me. And it's just, you know, we don't, I don't feel like we talk about that enough as teachers, like how important our mental health is and like how important it is to take mental health days. And, you know, our sick days are there for a reason, you know, you can't give from an empty tank. And so doing these kind of things are just so crucial for us and also for our students because we're really doing them a disservice if we're not showing up at a hundred percent so really that therapy has been like a life changer for me it is just so nice to have someone to vent to who has no idea what you're talking about and like can't give your opinion like oh well maybe you should have done this lesson like that like no I don't want to hear that I just want to hear that oh that sucks tell me more and that's that's all I need and then I feel a lot better because it's out of my brain it's out of my mouth and it's out of my life once that's how I look at therapy so I highly recommend if you're not already doing that find someone you can jump on because it is so good <laughs> that sounds Amazing. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Thank you for sharing that. That's definitely something that um, sounds like it could be super beyond helpful right now for a lot of people. A lot of us for sure. Ashley? I agree. That sounds also very, very healthy too, compared to me where I really like coffee and I easily drink like three cups a day. The students will see me like with my coffee mug, like in the morning on the, uh, and I really like flavored coffee. So I really like buying like right now the pumpkin coffee. I bought a pumpkin pecan coffee and then what else? Oh, hazelnut. And I just really like the flavors. It's something that soothing about the warm mug in my hand that just like also on a cold morning, I don't know, but I then tend to drink. I have the old fashioned coffee maker where it makes like a whole, like, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> is that what it's called? Yeah, the yeah. Crack. yeah. And so I'll fill it up to like 10 on it and the highest is 12. And then I'll just like, so it's, I know one cup of coffee is not bad, but then when you keep going and usually I'll have like two in the morning and I'll let it cool down. And then after class is over, I'll turn it back on again. So it heats back up and then I'll have another cup and yeah, so it's not it's not so it's not so good. But I really like the 
like the warm drink. Maybe I should switch to tea. Would probably be <laughs> still the warm drink, but a little. No, you mean it's what makes you happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll get the gingerbread. That was one of the hard things to switch to when it comes to hybrid. I am also a huge coffee drinker. And when you're in the classroom, you have your mask on. So like, I can like, I, I can't tell you my favorite thing when I was teaching like regular was I would like have my hot cup of coffee in my hand and I would like walk around my room while my kids were working together and I would just be like sipping in like their knowledge their group work and the coffee and I was like oh this is why I became a teacher and now I'm like sipping behind my mask in the corner of the room like trying not to freak anybody out so that is definitely like the hardest thing to transition to like I miss being in totally remote learning where I was literally just like chugging coffee all day in front of my camera like having no care in the world so that mm -hmm. I have seen people who do the straw under the mask but hot coffee and a straw just doesn't work for me so maybe you can figure out some sweet spot and then share it with me <laughs> I didn't even think of that because I was the same too I would like to sit at my desk or like while they're watching um sometimes we have like a video on Fridays where it's like the recap of the school so I'd put it on and then I'd to the back of the room I'd like drink my coffee while they're watching it I didn't even think of that I also like using season coordinated mugs. Like right now I have a pumpkin spice one. <laughs> I just, and then I have a Christmas one. And then after that, I don't have anything. So it's only this time, but I don't know. It's just, I like decorating for the holidays too. So I haven't decorated for Christmas yet. I don't do that until after Thanksgiving, but I do have all these fall decorations up too. So. Nice. Beth, what about you for self-care? Um, I have I don't know. I feel like everyone's like, oh, take care of yourself. And I'm like, okay, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> um, but I think like things I've been trying to do is like, uh, Fred, my husband goes to work at like six in the morning. So he'll wake up at 530. And so like, I've been waking up with him. And then some days I'm like, you know, I think I just need some more time. And so I'll just lay in bed and like, take a few more hours to get ready before I get out. <laughs> Uh, so that, that's been kind of nice to just tell myself, like, you need to stop and you need to, like, just stop working. It's okay. Um, and I feel like the work never ends. And so just knowing, like, giving yourself a hard stop is really important. And then also making sure you are taking care of yourself, like Christy said. Um, I think it's hard for me, even virtual, to be like, oh, I'm not feeling well today. I need to take a sick day because it feels like there's no excuse. You're like, well, you're already home. You're in comfy clothes. Um, so I think it's important still for me to like take those times um, and just have my own day. I think, Roy, I really resonated with your like shopping as your self-care. Um, this weekend I was so stressed and I like drank a whole coffee of coffee like Ashley and then I like sat on my laptop I was like oh my gosh like this coffee was like running through my system and I had so much work and I was like it's okay I'm just gonna shop online <laughs> and then you bought, it felt like, so good yeah but you bought like half the Madewell store online no I didn't I was on Etsy I was supporting small business owners this time very nice <laughs> very I love nice. shopping too oh sorry yeah. Yes, Ashley loves to shop for sure. So that's just her all year round um, self-care. Yeah. Just buying, buying, buying. But um, so one of the last things I wanted to just kind of wrap up with everyone is, you know, like our own personal growth, right? We've all grown so much as teachers. Um, it's like funny to think back, if you think back when you first started teaching in those first, you know, year or two, what you learned to do, what you thought was, you know, the end all, like, oh, this always works. I'm going to always do this as a teacher. And I've done so many things where I swore by it at that point. And then I, you know, pushed it aside and I realized I don't have time for that. Like I pushed away warm ups or do nows. Like I, I can't be bothered with a warm up or do now for the last four years, only because our periods regularly were 41 minutes. So no time for that, right? Got to move on. If you have a longer period, it works you know, I would have swore by warm-ups. I would have sworn by this. I would have sworn by homework being due the day that I gave the lesson. Now I'm like, ah, eh, no, you know what? Let them, let them take a few days because you can't always understand the thing, you know, something the day you taught it, you know, maybe they need to look at it the next day. Maybe they need a chance to ask me a question, something like that. Um, so that personal growth right now, I feel like is exponential, right? We are just growing so much so fast right now because we don't have a choice 
and to be the best teacher we possibly can be with what we're given to be um, that teacher. You know, there's just a lot that we're learning technology wise, a lot that we're trying to be flexible with, maybe things that we would have not done in a regular classroom setting. Now we're kind of like letting our guard down or like we were saying before, like certain things we want to be strict on and certain things, you know, we're kind of letting go. But overall, just as a teacher right now, do you feel like you are like this is, I find myself, I try not to put this on social media too much, but there's just so much of me during this remote learning time where I just feel like useless in a sense where I'm just, okay, I'm behind the laptop right now. And I basically could have been any teacher in the world um, because my students just don't even know me, right? They don't know what I would have been like putting on, you know, a show and a dance in my classroom and bopping around Christy like you would be doing and like being up in all everyone's business and singing Frozen songs and just being, you know, like having a great time trying to convince kids to make TikToks with me at lunch, stuff like that. And now I just feel like useless. Like I, I might as well just be some random online teacher in a different state right because that they don't have i don't have like such a good connection with my students so I, i'm finding myself to be like a little bit useless like i'm just not as my teaching is just not where it should be because i can't be that teacher right now like i was before so even though i feel like i've grown so much as a teacher i feel like i'm not i'm definitely not the best teacher i could be and i hope that changes with hybrid Maybe Christy in four days when I'm, you know, on a Monday with literally one student with me in one of my classes and two students or four students with me in another class. Um, and I make those connections back and I get back into my groove. Maybe I'll feel like I'm actually, my time is like, I'm, I'm worth it. You know, my effort is worth it. Because right now, overall, I got to say, I just don't feel like it's, it's worth, like I'm, worthwhile like i'm really just like the best teacher i can be even though i'm trying to put all this stuff together it just doesn't feel that way what about what about you guys do you feel like you're killing it right now do you feel like you're in the middle do you feel like you got it all together but it's kind of not what do you what are you thinking christine i think no one has it all together <laughs> um <laughs> i think that that would probably resonate with a lot of people listening to this right now because I obviously like understand that so strongly even though I am in the hybrid model I feel like since we left the classroom I feel like so many of us feel like we're failing um, only because anytime you're doing something brand new for the first time you are failing until you get it right and so so many of us are just trying new things every single day. So it just feels like we're constantly failing when in reality, we are bettering ourselves every day as teachers. And I definitely do feel that in a sense of why I became a teacher, I think I'm a better teacher um, in that I have now realized that I need to prioritize the relationships with my students so much higher than I normally did in the classroom. I have always been a teacher that prides myself on rapport and who really cares about, you know, I always send out surveys to my kids to ask them how they're doing and like things like that. But in regards to like really connecting with my kids, I really only connected with the kids who made the extra effort to chit chat with me in the beginning of class or like, you know, crack a joke in the middle of a lesson with me or something like that, you know, or be that kid that laughed and I'm like, come on guys, like really no one's gonna laugh at that, you know? Mm -hmm. And now, that's not the case. I feel like I have a, a real connection with pretty much almost every student I have right now because I'm prioritizing that so much more over the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that there's probably a previous version of myself that would be like, no, like, you know, they need to be able to pass the test. They need to be able to do that X, Y, Z. Like, you know, your relationship isn't going on their GPA. But, um, you know, I think the students are actually learning better because we have this relationship and they're more engaged and it's definitely tough. I mean, like today I came in and like my kids were going to take a unit test and we were going to re do a review beforehand. And I was like, you know what, guys, like I'm going to leave it up to you. 
tensions are high right now. It's the day after the election. Like I know everyone is stressed for so many reasons. And I know that the last thing you want to do is take this test. So like we can do a review if you want, we can play some games or, you know, we can just relax and we can just chit chat for a couple minutes and just take a beat and just prepare ourselves emotionally for this, you know? And there's a past version of me that would never have done that. I would have been like, if I don't go over this material, they're going to forget it. They're not going to do well on the exam. And I was proven so wrong. I mean, their averages are doing so well for the exam and I'm, I'm really proud of them. And it just shows you that like, you know, taking the time to care for the student, no different than we need to care for ourselves in those times where we need, we need it is so, so, so important. So I really feel like the reasons I became a teacher in regards to making the lives of students better, I am a better teacher because of that. So I, I am really happy in a way that this happened in a very weird, bizarro sense, um, just because I think that this is something that I will carry with me to, pre to following years. And, you know, I, I hope this, this lasts. I feel like they care about making connections too now because they really feel that loss. So I hope that this is something that they carry with them too. And they make connections with their professors, even if they're one in 300 and lecture hall yeah. you know they make that extra effort than maybe they wouldn't have before so yeah nice Ashley what about you yeah. well you gave me you've given me a lot to think about Christy that's really you're right about yeah the relationships and everything um and I do feel it's also similar to Rory in that I just feel like I feel lost and but also it depends for me for my class I feel like I'm a little bit better with my honors level students because I don't have that same like curriculum I have to get through for the AP like world history class so for that that class I do feel like I'm, I'm a worse teacher I just feel like yeah, it could just be anybody because their AP is also making these daily videos for the students which is great extra resource but it also feels like well that could just be me like it could just be another right. teacher yeah so I feel that way with them and I'm so like stressed about the test um, because so far there's we don't know what's happening with the AP test with because you know no one knows what's actually going to happen with COVID by May 2021 so I feel with that class I feel like I'm kind of more like business and there's like always like a lot of questions because they're unsure of everything and so I just feel like there's not like we haven't had time for the relationships and eat words if we were in class we would have time for that or like Rory says like goofing around making jokes I like historical memes and I always like try to put them in my presentations and I feel like I haven't done that as much this year either um so but there's other AP teachers that do historical memes as like uh, warm-ups and so I probably should probably should start yeah. doing something like that yeah like what does this mean in history or something but I just feel like yeah I just also feel kind of lost like I feel like I'm just not I don't know, that great of a teacher right now, because I don't know, I just, yeah, I feel like I could just be like anybody. I don't yeah. know. Totally. Yeah. I get, I 100% am right with you on that. And you know, Ashley, like you should bring back the memes and I should integrate more of my personality into things. I think when I don't see anyone's faces, I just get so discouraged. And then, but maybe if I did bring my personality more into my chat, maybe I could get more. What well, if you just like get up and dance? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, like these black screens. Maybe they'll turn it on. <laughs> yeah, and play Frozen in the background. I should. I'll start singing. You'll be like, I'll stop if you turn on your camera. <laughs> <laughs> that will work. What do I do that? How do you, How do you feel like you're doing stuff? I don't know. I feel like some days I'm like, wow, I really killed that lesson. Like I feel like everything went well, and then other days I'm like, wow, I don't think they learned anything. Um, but I also really resonated, Rory, when you said like some days you feel like you're a useless teacher. Mm -hmm. Cause like, that's so true. Like my lesson, like if I recorded that lesson, put that on YouTube, they could have just watched it. Like they didn't need to be in class. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like that's hard. Like after preparing and spending all that time on the lesson feeling like, well, technically like you could have learned that still without me. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, Christy, what you said about like building those relationships and for students to know that we're there, I think that reminded me that what we're doing isn't as useless as it feels some days and that like our kids who show up like they show up um, even if they are struggling and like my kids are all virtual and even if they feel like there's no reason I could have learned this online, um, they're still showing up and I feel like that says a lot about what we are doing in our virtual classroom, even though it, we don't feel that way. Um, and so I really liked what you had shared, Christy. I feel like that really reminded me of 
what we are doing and even though it's so different than what we had anticipated that we're still like doing the work that we wanted to do with our kids yeah well listen guys i'm just so thankful that we had this chat session right now what do you guys think this is our own little mini therapy session yeah? <laughs> it was it was and i mean i feel like everyone shared so many you know really important things about what we're all going through and um christy i feel like especially you just shared so much stuff that we're gonna snag we're going to take those <laughs> kids and we're running with it um so i really appreciate that um a lot and i know that a lot of teachers that are you know watching this at home you know are probably thinking a lot of the same things we're thinking who knows in a couple of weeks you know where we'll be at in our mindset with any changes that are going in our schools but it's definitely um a work in progress and i think the scary part too is we're only two months in <laughs> Oh so we don't know what the next we haven't even hit Thanksgiving yet. <laughs> I know. Oh, so, who knows, right? Yeah. So we will see. But um, I want to thank all of you guys for joining me on this edition of Remote Teaching Diaries uh, by Quizlet. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can check in again. Would you be down for that? A I check in maybe in a little while, a month or two, and see, you know, how we're doing or if things are better or worse or you know how we're feeling um who knows where we will be what things will be like in a couple of months right we have no idea especially with you know numbers increasing right now and just who knows where things will take us but uh definitely talking about these things does help quite a bit i feel slightly relieved right now <laughs> Definitely. For sure. Well, I just want to thank again all of you for joining me on this. And if you are watching at home, make sure you tune in for the next episode of Remote Teaching Diaries. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.